Welcome to Tier 2. Well done at reaching this point. From now on boxes are becoming a bit more difficult in the context of steps, usage of tools, and exploitation attempts as they start looking similar to the boxes in the main platform of HTB. Starting with Archetype which is a Windows machine, you can have a chance to exploit a misconfiguration in Microsoft SQL Server, try getting a reverse shell, and get familiarized with the use of unpack a tool in order to further attack some services. Enumeration Performing a network scan to detect what ports are open is already known as an essential part of the enumeration process. This offers us the opportunity to better understand the attacking surface and design targeted attacks. As in most cases, we are going to use the famous NMAP tool. We found that SMB ports are open and also that a Microsoft SQL Server 2017 is running on port 1433. We are going to enumerate the SMB with the tool SMB client. Where hyphen N is used for no password and hyphen L is used to allow you to look at what services are available on a server. We located a couple of interesting shares. Shares admin and seed cannot be accessed as the access denied error states. However, we can try to access and enumerate the backup share by using SMB client hyphen and target IP backups. From here run the help command to see some helpful commands that can be used at this place. Now run the dir command to see what is there in the backups directory. There is a file named prod.tts config which seems like a configuration one. We can download it to our local machine by using the git command for further offline inspection. Open the file using the cat command to inspect the content. By reviewing the content of this configuration file, we spot in clear text the password of the user sqlsvc, which is m3g4c0rp123, for the host archetype. With the provided credentials we just need a way to connect and authenticate to the MS SQL Server. Copy the username and password to Notepad. Now we have a username and password for the SQL Server, so let's try to attempt to get login access. The tool we are going to use is Impacket. Impacket tool includes a valuable Python script called mssqlclient.py which offers such functionality. But first, we should better understand what Impacket is and how we can install it. Visit the Impacket GitHub link by searching on Google, where you can read all about this tool. Copy the GitHub link and paste it after git clone. Now install it. You can find the installation steps on my blog to find out more information. You can find the mssqlclient.py file from example directory. Now we are ready to learn about the usage of the tool and specifically of the mssqlclient.py script. After understanding the options provided, we can try to connect to the mssql server by issuing sudo dot slash mssqlclient.py username at the target IP hyphen windows off. We provide the password we spotted previously in the configuration file. We successfully authenticated to the Microsoft SQL Server. Foothold After our successful connection, run help to find out the options of our SQL shell. The help option describes the very basic of the functionalities it offers. First, let me enable the XP command shell from 0 to 1. Now run reconfigure. 
run who am I command along with xp command shell to verify if command shell is working or not. The who am I command output reveals that the SQL server is also running in the context of the user archetype SQL SVC. However, this account doesn't seem to have administrative privileges on the host. Now, we will attempt to get a stable reverse shell. We will upload the nc64.exe binary to the target machine and execute an interactive command exe process on our listening port. We can download the binary from GitHub. Now, copy this file to htdocs of the XAMPP web server. Now run the control panel of XAMPP and start the Apache web server. My Apache server is running on port 8080. In order to upload the binary in the target system, we need to find the appropriate folder for that. We will be using PowerShell for this task since it gives us much more features than the regular command prompt. In order to use it, we will have to specify it each time we want to execute it until we get the reverse shell. To do that, we will use the PowerShell-C command. The hyphen C flag instructs PowerShell to execute the command. We will print the current working directory by using the pwd command. Run this command to upload the nc64.exe file to the download directory. Now run this command to get a reverse shell connection. Before that make sure you have started the netcat listener on your host machine. Run command prompt. From here change the directory where netcat is stored. Now run netcat lvnp443. As you can see, the netcat has started. Now click enter to get reverse shell connection. Finally, looking back at our netcat listener, we can confirm our reverse shell and our foothold to the system. The user flag can be found on the user's desktop. As you can see the user flag. Privilege Escalation For privilege escalation, we are going to use a tool called WinPEAS, which can automate a big part of the enumeration process in the target system. Let me change the directory to Downloads. Now visit the GitHub link and download the winpeas.exe file. We will transfer it to our target system by using a once more XAMPP server. On the target machine, we will execute the wget command in order to download the program from our system. We will use PowerShell for all our commands. We successfully downloaded the binary. Now execute it using dot slash in the file name. The output of the tool is long. Here you can find out some history, logs, and backups. From the output, we can observe that we have say impersonate privilege which is also vulnerable to juicy potato exploit. You can read more about these from this site. However, we can first check the two existing files where credentials could be possible to be found. As this is a normal user account as well as a service account, it is worth checking for frequently accessed files or executed commands. To do that, we will read the PowerShell history file, which is the equivalent of .bash history for Linux systems. 
The file console host history.txt can be located in this directory. Now, navigate to the folder where the PowerShell history is stored. To read the file, we will input, type, and then the file which we want to read. As you can see, the administrator password. We can now use the tool psexec.py again from the impacket suite to get a shell as the administrator. Now run Python 3 psexec.py administrator at 10.129.33.197. The root flag can now be found on the desktop of the administrator user. Finally, we have managed to get both flags. Sorry to say but I have already completed this machine a few days before, but you can find the answers from my blog. If you have any doubts and queries then write me a comment below in my comment section.